It's so good. You can tell we haven't seen each other in a while. Everyone's still talking, and we're not ready to start yet. We did that. We did that last night too. Everyone was still talking and, and, and saying hi. It's good to see everybody. So it is wonderful to be back in person. I do have a couple of announcements. A reminder that next Wednesday, the 17th, is Ash Wednesday. And we will be starting our Lenten journey. We will have service at noon and at 6.30. So if you're interested, um, Ash Wednesday will be the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. Um, and that's at noon and 6.30. And then throughout the Lenten journey, we're going to take a look at um, the Israelites' journey in the Exodus. So if you remember the story of the Exodus, they start with getting freed from Egypt, right? They're slaves in Egypt. Remember Pharaoh, let my people go, the 10 plagues, all of that good stuff. And then um, it takes them 40 years to wander in the wilderness till they finally reach the promised land. We will be starting Sunday school next week. Um, we're taking this week to give the teachers a, a little bit of time to get back into the flow of things, but we'll be starting next week um, for Sunday school as well. Um, we continue to celebrate, or celebrate, we continue to do Bible study on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock. We're studying the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a book that you can jump right into. It's not really a story that, you know, you have to be there for the beginning. Um, so if you're interested, you can join us for Proverbs on Tuesdays at 9. Let us read together Mark 12, 28 to 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to please rise for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I might proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you know the difference between tired and exhausted? Some of you are raising your hands already. Well, if you run in front of a car, you're going to get tired. If you run behind a car, you're going to get exhausted. But um, boom. We do know the difference between tired and exhausted. We have probably all felt the difference between tired and exhausted. A lot of times when we're tired, we're just, we're tired from the day. 
things that have been going on. We've been rushing around. We've had things to do. We have people that we have to see. We have commitments that we have to attend to. And by the end of the day, we're just plumb tired. We want to go to bed. The other night, I was awoken at 2 in the morning by a sick dog. And she had me up all night. And Thursday, I finally took her to the vet and got her some medicine, and now she's, she's better. But that made me tired. I was ready to go to bed. But I knew a good night's sleep, and I would be all right in the morning. Then there's other times when I have felt exhausted. And you know what exhausted feels like? Like, not even a good night's sleep is going to help you. You're just you're just extra tired and weary from life in general, from what's going on in the world. Most of us have felt exhausted when it has come to this pandemic that we're facing, right? We're, we're tired of wearing masks and we're tired of having to follow certain um, social distancing and not being able to get together with our friends, but we're exhausted about hearing the numbers of people who, who may have succumbed to this disease and we're exhausted by not being able to meet in person and worship, which is why today is such a celebration day. That's going to be our theme song for the, for the day. Celebrate good times. Come on. <laughs> we know the difference. And we've all been there. Some of you have been extra exhausted. Not only do we have the pandemic to face, some of you are facing times with, with kids or grandkids that have to be homeschooled and, and, and they're getting exhausted. Our teenagers are exhausted with having to be at home learning and not being with their social groups and not being able to interact with their teachers in the way that they used to. Some of you have been dealing with illnesses or loss of loved ones or loss of mobility. We're getting older and that can be exhausting. This world can be exhausting at times. But we have hope. We have the words of our first lesson, Isaiah, one of my favorite lessons, and I love particularly the second half of Isaiah, and it's somewhat familiar to, to all of us. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And then we have the promise and the hope. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Isaiah tells us, even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. It's inevitable. This world, this life, will make us exhausted from time to time. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In God, we are given renewed strength. In God, we are given renewed power. In God, we are given the hope that we can trudge through this life because we have the promise that one day we will be renewed in the resurrection. Even Jesus got tired. Did you catch that in our gospel lesson? When it was very dark, still early, he went to a deserted place to be alone. He was tired. 
But where did he turn? What did he do in his tiredness, in his exhaustion? He went to God. He prayed. Because he knew God was the one who would give him strength. God was the one who would give him power. God was the one who would renew him to be able to continue to spread the gospel message. There will be times when we will be tired. There will be times when we will be exhausted. But we have a God who never tires, who never grows weary of us turning to him and asking for renewed strength. When we are feeling tired, when we are feeling at our wit's end, when we are exhausted, all we have to do is take some time, and I know that can be hard too, to find the time. But we take some time and we call upon God and we ask, Lord, please fill my cup. Lord, please give me the strength. Lord, please be with me in this time and God is there God with his goodness God with his grace God with his forgiveness God with his mercy is there for us no matter what and no matter when so yes at two in the morning when Kenzie woke me up that's my dog I pray, Lord, please make Kenzie okay and give me the strength to care for her. And God was there. He does not faint or grow weary. He doesn't tire of us coming to him time and time again, no matter what the problem God is there for us. And we shall mount up with wings like eagles and carry on in God's power and strength. Amen.